In the second part of uh, this week's course materials, we'll discuss uh, t-test. You will see here we have uh, three different files and we'll start with uh, the word file to explain what uh, t-test is. And as you can see, that's a t-test example where we're going to compare the means of two groups and we'll find out whether they're statistically significant or not. And usually you have a control group and a treatment uh, group. So if we compare the two means of the groups, you will see that uh, in this case they're slightly different. However, is that statistically significant uh, difference? So when you scroll down, you will notice that uh, we have different options here. There are a number of distributions where you have uh, one distribution with medium variability, then you have another distribution with high variability, and this one is with low variability. However, all three of them have uh, exactly the same means or averages. So there are a couple of important things to uh, remember. Here's the formula that we have to compare the differences between the group means, then we have to divide that by variability of the groups. So here are the differences between the two means, and then we have to compare the variability of the groups. And then uh, the formula for standard error of uh, the difference between the means is the square root of the variance of the first group divided by number of observations in the group plus the variance of the second group divided by number of observations in the second group. So in a way the t-test formula becomes the mean of or the average of uh, the first group minus the average of the second square root of the variances divided by total number of observations of the first group and then variance of the second group divided by total number of observations. Now there are a couple of things to remember um, here. So the first thing we need to discuss is that magic number alpha level. So in order to test the significance you need to set a risk level, also called alpha level. So usually we would set that alpha level at 0 0.05 or 5%. So we'll give it 5% chance due to something else affecting the results that could be the temperature, could be relative humidity, could be anything. So we'll give it 5% chance that something else is affecting the results. The other important thing that we need to determine is the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom for the, this test is all the degrees of freedom minus uh, 2 or number of observations minus 1 in each group. And you will see how uh, that is actually not that uh, difficult if we follow the rules uh, set uh, in the uh, Excel uh, examples. So now that we know that uh, t-test is a way to test the statistical significance of the differences between the two groups and that is two groups only because next week we're going to study analysis of variance and you will see if we have more than two groups we're going to use analysis of variance. This week we're going to test the differences between two groups only. For that we're going to use a t-test. So if we go to our course materials, you'll see that we have a PowerPoint presentation there which I'll have to explain what that means and then we're going to download the lean and silicosis t-test file. So we're going to test the uh, differences between two workstations. Both of them will produce pistons for a car, four-cylinder a car. So here's how that uh, looks like. The engine of a car 
who have the cylinders and the pistons. So if you make these pistons too big, they're not going to fit. If you make them too small, this car is going to leak oil. Both of these cases, that is uh, not a good idea. Therefore, they set up the difference or deviation from the piston diameter in millimeters at plus or minus five millimeters. Even that's way too much, but you know, let's uh, call it for educational purposes uh, sufficient. So workstation number one produced 15 pistons uh, in one hour and workstation number two produced another 15 pistons. So we were told that we have to downsize the company so we can only leave one of the two workstations. Therefore we have to decide based on statistical analysis which one we have to downsize technically. The first thing we can do is if you remember from last couple of weeks we're going to um, calculate the mean or the average for both groups then we're going to calculate standard deviation and we'll see how that looks like and based on that we'll decide which of the operators we have to let go. So let's uh, do function and average it should be in your most recently used by now and we'll calculate the average for actually C4 through C18 I selected that and as you can see the average is 3.13 now if I go back to the lower end corner and if I slide it sideways it will Excel will automatically calculate the average for column D so that is uh, another advantage of uh, Excel. Now we need to select standard deviation and we're going to select standard deviation of a sample. So we'll go to all and we'll scroll down all the way, all the way to letter S and we're going to select standard deviation of a sample. You will notice that is a standard deviation of a sample versus standard deviation of the whole population. So we'll select standard deviation of a sample and we'll select OK. Now we have to be careful because Bill Gates already included for us C19 which is the mean and we don't want that. We want all the way to C18. So C4, C18 again and that's the standard deviation for the first workstation and if we side, slide it sideways we'll get standard deviation for the second sample. So now based on that we see that we have a little bit more deviation from the mean in workstation number two and we have slightly greater standard deviation so we decided to let the operator for workstation number two go. Now if you only do that, he or she may say that uh, they were uh, wrongfully terminated and based on statistical analysis that was wrong. So how do they know that? Well, the only way to find out is to find out whether there was statistically significant difference between workstation number two pistons and workstation number one pistons. So here is how we're going to do that. Now, if you go to data, you will see that data analysis uh, tool pack. If you don't have that on your computer, more likely we have to go to file, options, pay attention to that. So we'll go to options and in the options we're going to select add ins. So once you select that, you will see that the analysis tool pack is already there. So I'm going to select analysis tool pack. I will select go, not OK, go. I will select analysis tool pack check box. We don't need the euro currency or the VBA analysis in this case. So we're going to select analysis tool pack only. I will say OK. 
And right now you will see that I have data analysis uh, pack there. Once you click on data analysis, you will see that uh, if you scroll down, there is built-in t-test in Excel, and that is t-test paired to sample for means. So we're going to test the hypothesis that uh, whether we have statistically significant difference between the two sets of data. So let's say OK, and it's going to ask us about variable 1 range and variable 2 range. So variable 1 range, I will select workstation number 1, and notice I selected the label here. I will do the same thing for variable range number 2. So variable range number 2 is workstation number 2, and I selected the label. And since I selected the label, I have to click on labels. They are in the first row. These are labels. So I want to see workstation number one and number two when I produce the uh, t-test. And I'll hypothesize that there is no statistically significant difference, so we'll say zero. The other thing you will notice is that alpha level. So like I told you, we're going to leave that at point zero. Five. Unless you have any other reason to believe that it's greater, just leave it at 0 0.05. And now I will say that is a T test workstation one versus workstation two. And I will say OK. And now we're going to see the T test results. Now, what we need to know about this t-test here is you will see the mean for workstation number one versus number two. We already did that, the variance. We had 15 observations in each of the two cases. Both of them produced 15 pistons. Then we decided uh, we think there is no statistically significant difference and notice the next thing is degrees of freedom. Because we had 15 observations or 15 pistons in our case, we have to subtract one and degrees of freedom is 14. Now here's the most important number for us, that is the t-stat number. If this t-stat number is less than the absolute value of that t-stat number, if that is less than T critical one tail, ignore the two tail. I will tell you a little bit more about that in a couple of minutes. If that absolute value of T stat is less than T critical one tail, that means that uh, we don't have statistically significant difference. Definitely, we let that uh, operator go based on assumptions, based on the mean, but as you can see, there is a lot more in statistics than simply uh, standard deviation and mean and range and mode and uh, all these other statistical manipulations that we're already familiar with. So now you know how to do t-test paired to sample for means. Now we're going to go to the silicosis example. So I prepared another example for you. And if you see number of silicosis cases since 1968 all the way to 2002, number of silicosis cases is dropping down, which is a good thing. However, we want to make sure that we have statistically significant difference. Let's assume that uh, OSHA started implementing the uh, silicosis emphasis program after 1984. So we're going to select a number of silicosis cases from 1968 to 1984, and then we'll compare them to silicosis cases from 1985 to 2002. Now, what we can do is we'll do the mean, standard deviation range, you already know how to calculate that. And just to remind you, coefficient of variance is standard deviation divided by the mean. 
Now, in this case, we're not interested in this value. So we're interested in the differences, whether we have statistically significant difference between the two groups. And I will say, I will select numbers there in blue from 1968 to 1984. I will copy that and I will paste them here in the F column. Then I will select the numbers from 1985 to 2002. I will copy that and paste them here. Up here I will say that is from 1968 through 84. And here we have from 85 through 2002. 85 that is not 55 okay now we have the two sets of data we want to compare them using the t-test and we'll find out whether we have statistically significant difference or not again we'll go to data data analysis and we'll select t-test pair to sample for means so now we're going to select and including the label up top then we'll select the G column with the label up top. Don't forget to click the labels here if we have that. And we'll say that is T-test silicosis. Cases. Once you click OK, you'll find out that we can't do it that way. And read very carefully why we can't do it that way I just wanted to show you what's going to happen if you try to compare two sets of data and you try to do the t-test paired to sample for means notice that variable ranges must have the same number of data points and since we don't have the same number of data points we cannot use t-test paired to samples for means so what we'll do is I'm going to cancel that. Once you cancel it, you have other options. We're going to use t-test to sample assuming unequal variances. So let's do that. We're going to assume unequal variances and I will say OK. Now I'll say select variable range one here. I will select variable range comb G. I do have labels. Be careful with that. So if you have labels in the first uh, row, click on the labels. We leave alpha at 0.05 and we'll say that is a t-test silicosis cases. I will say OK. And now you will notice that we actually have the means for both groups. Obviously the first one before to, uh, eight, 1984 was greater. Variance again a lot greater than uh, in the second group. We have 17 observations in the first group. However, we have 18 observations in the second group. Minus one degrees of freedom is 17. T-stat, notice that that is 6.0 here that means it is greater than t critical one tail so and again notice that we're going to use the absolute value it doesn't matter whether it's negative or plus value it is absolute difference so in this case we have statistically significant difference between the two groups and Obviously, OSHA efforts to reduce silicosis cases are working. So now that you know how to do t-test in Excel, we have just one more thing to uh, discuss. And you will notice that we discussed Lean and Six Sigma. So Lean is for speed, Six Sigma is for quality. In the Pistons cases, we need both. We need speed, we need quality. 
So if you watch uh, golden days of uh, General Motors, you will notice that uh, you know they talk about uh, speed versus quality, and it's a very interesting video. You probably enjoy it if you have time. I would definitely recommend. One more thing that we need to discuss is where that uh, two tail T test comes from. If you right click on that link, you will get to a website where it explains the uh, difference very well. So if you're looking at one tail difference, you will notice that alpha level that we set at 0.05, we can either assume that it's on the negative side or on the positive side, but you know, that is we're testing the assumption for one tail only, t-test difference. If you're going to assume the uh, two-tail t-test, then you have to split that alpha level into two. So that means you have 0 0.025 or 2.5% on the left side of the bell-shaped curve, and then you have uh, another uh, 0 0.025 or 2.5% alpha on the other side. I would definitely encourage you to always use the one-tailed uh, test because the two-tailed t-test is very rarely used and it's kind of uh, difficult to uh, deal with it. Therefore, I would say the one-tail test is a little bit more uh, conservative approach, so stay with it and uh, that's why we decided to use the one-tail compare the one tail difference versus the two tail. So always compare T stat number versus T critical one tail. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, T test uh, calculation. It's uh, very easy if you know how to do it. Next week we're going to work with not two but three or four or five different groups and obviously we have to use analysis of variance. So T test we compare two groups only for statistical difference. Analysis of variance will compare two or more.